Okay, so let's have a look at some lightweight cryptography. The method that we'll be looking at is the rabbit method, but hopefully along the way we can understand the difference between our normal cryptography and our lightweight cryptography and how we create a method which is efficient when it comes to uh, IoT and limited power devices. So we normally split our cryptography into two main classifications. We have conventional cryptography for our servers, desktops, tab tablets and smartphones. So these typically have high powered processing capabilities with lots of memory uh, and uh, uh, they have a fairly good power source. So we can use methods such as AES and public key encryption such as RSA, elliptic curve for that type of uh, system. But for lightweight cryptography, we're typically dealing with low powered devices such as RFID tags or um, uh, low powered even four or eight bit uh, embedded systems. These tend to have problems in terms of the energy supply. This is a passive RFID tag. So it takes this energy from the radio wave which hits it and powers itself up. So we can't really be consuming a lot of power. We also don't want to drain the power if there's a battery present. So power constraints are a massive uh, uh, constraint for uh, our low powered uh, devices. Also, uh, we have the size of the chip, the number of gates. The more gates that we have, the more drain and power typically that we have. And obviously the larger the chip, the more expensive it is. And timing issues too are typically methods that we would uh, look at uh, trying to understand the lightweight cryptography because it does no good to, for our methods to be taking a long time. We need them to be efficient on these limited uh, devices. So some of the uh, lightweight cryptography that we have. So we have our, our uh, symmetric key encryption methods. There's a block or stream. We take a, a, a secret key and it's shared by both sides and they'll both use the encryption to create our cipher. So we can have a block cipher where we take blocks of data at a time and cipher them. Uh, X, T, present, Simon, spec, LED and so on are block ciphers. Some of them are based on the AES standard that we see but are stripped down maybe with smaller uh, block sizes and fewer rounds and so on. But the faster ones, as we'll see, are the stream ciphers. And we'll, these are some of them, Mickey, a grain, and so on. But in this presentation, we'll have a look at the rabbit uh, stream encryption method. And hashing, we need to use uh, alternative methods, Proton, Quark, and so on, are hash, lightweight crypto hashing methods. And then there are, there's one asymmetric method, ELI, which allows a public and a private key to be used. And then we can also have MAC functions uh, for our lightweight cryptography. So before we look at a lightweight crypto method, and especially into stream ciphers, let's have a look at uh, what a, a high powered block cipher looks like. So this is AES, uh, Rindau, Rindau, uh uh, method. It uses either 10 rounds for 128 bit, 12 rounds for 192 or 12, 14 rounds for 256 bit uh, keys. So we go through each round and we take a bit of the key each round and we, we add it in to the, to the process. First we go through for each round we go through what's called a substitution byte or an S box. An S box, initially we take a four by four data array with, with 16 bytes, that's the 128 bit uh, blocks. And we take a four by four of these. They go into the S box and then we do a lookup. So four, four, four comes out as one B here on the, on the output of the S box. We then shift the rows and then shift the columns and then add the encryption key part into the round. 
then we do the same again uh, we go through it again and then after the tenth round this is our cipher text on the other side we do the reverse so everything that we've done we then do the reverse of so we have an a reverse of this s box which will unpack again and we go back up so it's far too complicated complex for many simple devices to go through this this whole mangling process so rabbit is a stream cipher and stream ciphers are much much faster than block ciphers typically what we have is a shared key between bob and alice they might do a key exchange or there is something that they know and it's secret to them what we don't want is for the same uh, cipher to be mapped to the input uh, data stream. So we need to change it in some way. So we add some salt and the salt is the initialization vector. So we take the key and the initialization vector and then we create an infinitely long key stream. So we only use the length of the key stream that will relate to the size of the data. So we, chunk, we, we split it off and only use enough bits that will match the data stream. But the data stream could go on and on and on and on forever. It will be infinitely long. So this creates a cipher stream. Then take a data stream and we have a really simple operation which is a bitwise XOR. So bitwise XOR 0, 0 gives us 0, 0, 1 gives us 1, 1, 0 gives us 1, and 0, 0 gives 1, 1 gives us 0. And the great thing with XOR is we, if we XOR with something and we XOR it back again with the same thing, it gives us the original data back again. So one bit at a time, we take one bit at a time from the cipher stream and we XOR it, that becomes the cipher stream. On the other end, Alice has the same key. We will pass the IV value to Alice and Alice will then take the IV value and generate the same stream cipher here. She'll take the stream cipher one bit at a time and then XOR the same stream that Bob created and create magically the data stream. And the great thing with this is it's almost in real time. As the bits arrive, as the bits are sent, they can be decoded on the other side uh, in the almost in real time. With a block cipher, we take blocks and then we chain them on to other blocks so that we've got to receive the whole of the data before we can actually decode the data. In a stream cipher, it can be made in almost real time. Okay, so this is what the rabbit stream cipher looks like. We only need about 512 bits internally to store the current state. So the state will iterate each time and the more and more data that we need will increment the state number. We have eight counters here, and we have eight state values, which are the x values. And we define the current state number as i. So we go through a sequence uh, here. These, this is the shift or the rotate uh, left for the bits, and they get moved. And the uh, after each each of these moves then we'll end up with, with the with 128 bits of the uh, of the key that can be XORed. So we have eight counters and eight states. These are loaded up with the key initially. We then take the IV value and then load that up with an XOR function into the counters and we're all ready to go. So then what we do is that we increment through the states with the shifts that are involved here. Uh, we, in this case, we take the state and we move it 16 places to the left. The bits fall out and go on the other end, and that goes into there. Okay, so it's a quite a dynamic relationship that we have here. But the states, the values that we have here, are then used to create the key. And as I said, that key is then XORed with the data stream. So here's an example here. There's the message IV of zero, and we'll take an MD5 hash to create the 128-bit key. We'll use that key and the IV value to create an encrypted value. What you notice here is there's three bytes here, 
and there is three bytes here for the encrypted value. So we have no overhead and extra number of bits that we actually create for the value. So let's see. So let's see if we can view this cipher. There we go. So we'll make it here. And we'll have a query one, two, three. And an IV value of one. So there we go. So it's one, two, three, four, five bytes in our string. And then we have one, two, three, four, five for encrypted. And you can see it decrypts back into a string here. Okay, so if you're interested, the code is here to be able to do that. And the research paper is also on, on, on a link. But you can see that we're creating the key here. And then all we're doing is to use the rabbit method to encrypt the message. And then we'll decrypt it back uh, again. So along with it being real time and much faster, it could be typically three times faster than uh, AES method, a stream cipher allows us to multiply up with multiple threads. With a cipher block method with the chaining, then, then the outputs of one block feeds into the next block and, and so on. So it's difficult to make that parallel because each block is waiting for the one before to chain into it. With a stream cipher, the great advantage is that we can split the data up into streams, let's say 128 bits each. And then, let's say we had 4,000 processors, we could give each of the processors part of the data stream, and then we give each, uh, we take our cipher stream and split it up into 128 bits each, give each of our processors the cipher key, and then we get them to XOR to produce this part of the cipher stream that they are responsible for and then we can rebuild it back here. So the great thing with this is that we can multiply up this to create a quite a high throughput uh, cipher stream if we need it and we can typically get gigabits per second for this. Okay so that's been the lightweight crypto method of Rabbit and I hope it's explained a little bit about what a block cipher looks like and what a uh, stream cipher is, looks like and why we would use uh, uh, a stream cipher. Thank you.